Detective Poirot, I trust this finds you well. It has been many years since our paths last crossed, and while I'm sure your recollection of the events may differ from mine, I hope that receiving this letter has not rekindled a sense of animosity toward myself or the Van der Bosch name. The impression you made is something that has stayed with me since that day. It compelled me to reconsider the spoiled young lady I would have inevitably become and help shape me into the woman I wished to be. You made me see the childish and selfish girl in me that did not consider the consequences of her actions or how they may affect others. Although Maman may see the events of that day differently, I believe the compassion you showed for our maid Florette, as well as the drive to uncover the truth and accept no alternative, was a testament to your character and professionalism. Although I wish it were under different circumstances, your assistance is once again required, and I hope you will consider this as my formal request for your service. This forthcoming weekend was due to be one full of joy and happiness at the announcement of my engagement to Gideon Demir, whom I love dearly, bringing together two illustrious families, but it has been shadowed by deceit, extortion and blackmail. The Van der Bosch name is being held to ransom by a mysterious party, and I am afraid I do not know who I can and cannot trust. We are holding a small gathering to celebrate our exciting news with what Maman calls the dignified elite, those that are well respected and held in high regard in both our close inner circle and society. Our private matters have always remained just that, so I fear one of those invited may be the person who is out to ruin our name, but for reasons I cannot fathom. I have enclosed a first-class rail ticket for you to join us for the announcement, and having contacted your superiors and the correct authorities to request your assistance, which they were more than happy to grant me, I shall expect your arrival with great anticipation. There shall be a carriage waiting for you at the station to bring you directly to Mnemosan House. I thank you in advance in our time of crisis. Yours respectfully, Angeline van der Bosch.
Bonjour. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am here at the invitation of Mademoiselle Angeline. Ah, Detective Poirot. We have been expecting you. Please come in from this frightful cold. Merci. I don't think I would have lasted much longer out here before turning into an icicle. Welcome. I am Archibald Sterling, the head butler. Please accept my apologies. I have a rather pressing matter, but I will see that you are attended to immediately. Do not trouble yourself on my behalf. I am sure I am more than capable of finding my room. I shall straighten myself up and be ready to join the party. Ah, there is no rush, Detective. Dinner will not be served for some time. So please, make yourself comfortable. Once you have settled in, I am sure that Miss Angeline will be happy to see you. She has been eager for your arrival. She's not been herself recently. You will be staying on the first floor. I believe your room is one of the two on the west side of the house. Merci. I am sure we shall speak again soon. Ah. Bonjour. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Detective Hercule Poirot. Detective? <laughs> I hope you're not here for me. Not that I am aware of. Should I be? Ha! <laughs> not often you meet a detective with a sense of humor. I'm Zakaria Demir, but you can call me Zach. If I had seen them, maybe I would have. It is meant to be their celebration, but they're always off, dealing with something or other. Something or other? A rather vague expression. Let's just say they like to keep their cards close to their chest. For such a well-known family, I'm surprised they can keep anything hidden. Would you care to elaborate on what Mademoiselle may be hiding? I'd rather not. You're the detective, isn't that your job? Très bien, Monsieur Demir. You'll be lucky. I've been waiting for a refill for ages. I came out here to find someone myself. Ah, I see. The preparations for this evening's dinner must have taken precedence. I've seen that butler running around like a madman, but there is still no party to speak of. It's pretty clear they need to hire a few more hands. I shall take up no more of your time. A bientôt. Hmm. Ah. 
beginning to become clearer. of the puzzle are finally coming together. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Success. I never doubted myself. You must be Detective Poirot. Welcome. Allow me to introduce myself. Gideon Demir. The fiancé to Mademoiselle Angeline. The pleasure is all mine. Angeline spoke so highly of you. It sounds as though you are the man that can sort this terrible mess out. I am, monsieur. You have my word. She tries her best to keep everyone else happy, but I can see it is taking its toll. Quite understandable. She is feeling the burden of the family that is not hers to carry. Angeline has spoken with her mother. 
She has asked if there is anything that could be used against her, but she was just so dismissive. And what are your thoughts on the matter? I do not want to overstep my position, but if there is something that could damage not only the Vandenbosch name, but our future, Angeline deserves to know. And that is a very diplomatic answer. You have met, madame. You know it is best to not get on her wrong side. Mostly friends of the family. A couple of business associates of mine. Quite a mix from all walks of life. With regards to the blackmailing, can they be trusted or should they be considered suspects? Angeline is struggling to trust anyone right now, but Madame Vandenbosch, as it is her house, thought it was best for us to have them all present. And they will all be staying in the house? Yes, it is a rather full house. All six guests will be staying on this floor. The family resides on the second floor. As does Felix. I will be sure to speak with them all. However, I will keep my identity and purpose for being here hidden, at least until I have made my initial introductions. I'm afraid that ship may have already sailed. Once the Comtesse gets wind of something, a detective coming to the house for example, you can bet everyone will know. You are very observant, detective. You would be wise to keep that perceptive nature while you're here. I'm sure you are correct, but I'd like to return to your feelings towards the Major. He has been a good friend to Madame Vandenbosch over the years, but that does not make him a good man, or suitable to involve himself in family affairs. Merci, Monsieur. I shall leave you to prepare for tonight's celebrations. Detective, it looks as though I might be out here all weekend. What can I do for you? I'm a guest. I shouldn't have to go around chasing them. Perhaps the party preparation is more of a priority. It's not my fault they aren't ready. Why don't I wait here while you check in the butler's pantry in the East Corridor? I think I saw a maid go in there earlier. I shall take up no more of your time. A bientôt. Mademoiselle Angeline, it is a pleasure to see you again. Detective, how wonderful you are here. Your travel was not too arduous, I hope? Watching from my carriage window, I saw the beautiful countryside and rolling hills. It was anything but taxing. I'm truly thankful you could make it here at such late notice. No thanks are required, mademoiselle. When one is requested personally, there is nothing more important. Gideon and I only wanted a small dinner to celebrate our engagement, but Maman was adamant on throwing this party. It may have been her idea, but it's the staff that have made it happen. Their efforts do not go unnoticed, from me at least. They have been with us for so long, I do my best to make sure they are happy and content.
Oh, detective. I'm afraid I just don't know. She was quite adamant at the police station that she would not be returning to the house, but I assumed she would at least collect her belongings. Maman demanded that Elizabeth pack up everything she had and dispose of it. But I couldn't let that happen. Elizabeth and I took her belongings, what little there was of them, to a friend of hers in the town that Elizabeth knew of. But not even she had heard from her. I wanted to contact her, but I had no address or telephone number. Surely Madame must have had some information when she employed her. You saw how Mama was. As soon as Florette was out of sight of the house, it was as though she had never been there at all. Elizabeth was most upset at the news Florette would not be returning. And your Mama's choice to ignore her accountability for the girl stopped you searching. Please, detective, you cannot make me feel any worse than I already do. If I could go back and live that day again, you must believe me, I would never have done it. Only Maman, Elizabeth, my beloved Gideon, and you, of course. And what is your fiancé's opinion of the letters? He thinks me foolish for paying the first one if there is no secret to reveal, but... But you believe there may be a secret lurking, one that Maman is herself keeping hidden. She tells me nothing. Even though I'm a grown woman on the verge of marriage, she still treats me like the child I once was. Perhaps it is out of love that she protects you. It is in every mother's nature to protect their young from hurt. Not a single person. I don't know anyone that would stoop so low. The guests that will be joining us tonight, they are ones you can trust? I hope so, detective. Before the letters arrived, I would not have thought twice about it. They are all close friends of yours, I assume. Friends and colleagues, Gideon has spoken positively about them. It would be a rather underhanded tactic to do such a thing to someone you are doing business with. Yes, Maman has quite a collection, although they are not all to my taste. Most, in fact. The painting of the saints in particular, it is quite exquisite. Is it connected to the house in some way? The one in the hall? If you look above your bedroom door, you will see one of their names. I believe they were originally carved to watch over the occupant. Merci, mademoiselle. I shall find you if there is anything further I need.
Ah, Mademoiselle Elizabeth, what a pleasure to see you again. Detective Poirot, I'm so glad you could make it. Unfortunately, it is not purely for pleasure that I am here. Mademoiselle Angeline requires my attention professionally. Yes, Angeline has told me. I'm glad she called upon you, Detective. I've been rather worried about her. I will do everything I can to find the blackmailer and bring them to justice. I have every faith in you. I hope I am not interrupting you. We are all very busy, as I'm sure you can imagine. After I'm done, I can come to your room and help you with any further questions. No one escorted you! I'm so sorry. Everyone is just so frantic at the moment. Madame has requested all staff prepare for this evening. And you have been tasked with jobs in the pantry. Surely your talents could be used elsewhere. I do as Madame asks. Well, as Archie asks. Monsieur Sterling. Yes, I met him when I arrived. A charming gentleman. He did give me some rather vague instructions to find my room, though. I can only apologize on his behalf. He would be mortified. I'm afraid I cannot be of much more help, but I believe you are located next to Mr. De Silva. By all means, the house is yours to explore. Yes, I'm afraid it may be all for show, though. She has not been herself, and it is not only I that have noticed. Madame Vandenbosch? Surely it must have had some effect on her. Madame has carried on as though nothing has happened. She has never been one to show emotion, and she doesn't seem to notice how it has affected Angeline. The staff, on the other hand... Angeline means no harm, but there have been some instances recently where she has acted rather sharply with them. I hope not too sharply. A house of two Madame Vandenbosch's would surely be too much for anyone. Ah yes, guests are requested to sign the book when arriving. I believe it gives details to the guests' room locations. It stated the male guests are to be staying in the East Wing. Yes, Madame does not believe in male and female guests residing beside one another. Oh, yes, um, well, I'm afraid it is far from a happy ending. Luke is sadly no longer with us. Oh, Mademoiselle, I, I was not aware. It's fine, Detective, honestly. I'm sorry, but I really must finish this. Bien sûr, mademoiselle. Uh, merci, mademoiselle. Pleasure is mine, detective.
before you leave, Detective, I have something for you beside the furnace here from Angeline. She wanted me to give it to you on your arrival. Merci, mademoiselle. What a revelation! Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Another success. I never doubted myself. Of course, Detective. What is it? I would not say it in front of the Major, but it is rather hideous. It was a gift from him to Madame from his time overseas. I don't think it even has the capability of writing. A pen that does not write is like a fish that cannot swim. As Angeline describes it, a useless ornament. It's the thought that counts, I suppose. Uh, merci, mademoiselle. The pleasure is mine, detective. Oh. What can I help you with, detective? I was right to pay it, yes? You have read them. What do you think? You were wise to consult me, but bowing to their threat may have only shown that you are willing to pay for their silence. Is the secret they speak of worth so much? I wish I could, but I have no idea. The letter was addressed to me, but I have nothing to hide. Maman took one look at it and disregarded the whole thing as someone's idea of a joke. She looked at it. She is not aware of the second letter. She doesn't know I paid the first. I thought I could make it all go away. 
Did you ask madame if there was a family secret they could be privy to? She said uh, I was to ignore the letters and stop wasting my time with such foolishness. If there was something, she wouldn't tell me anyway. I couldn't ask Maman for the money. She was angry that I had even considered paying it. Gideon offered to help me. Pardon, did he not think you foolish for paying? He did, but he said he couldn't stand by and watch me in so much distress. How honorable. We are soon to be married, detective. A loving partnership that faces their troubles together. There are his words. I did not mean anything by it, mademoiselle. You have found yourself a husband that will stand by your side and do what must be done to protect you. I am most pleased for you. Pardon, how could you not know? Surely his absence from the house was noticed. Maman fired him after he returned to the house. She said he could not be trusted. But Mademoiselle Elizabeth's position was kept? I begged Maman for them both, but she said if he was willing to go behind her back, what else could he do? Falling in love is a far cry from committing even the smallest crime, n'est-ce pas? She has been a kind shoulder to lean on through all this mess, but it is her I worry about. She has been through so much. I was not aware of what had happened, and by mentioning, I fear I may have only made it worse by dredging up the past. Do not punish yourself, detective. You are not to know. I don't think your honest mistake will make much difference to how she has been feeling recently. Merci, mademoiselle. I shall find you if there is anything further I need. Detective, it looks as though I might be out here all weekend. What can I do for you? Is that what he said? I can barely understand most of what he says with that accent. I find his accent rather pleasant, reassuring. I guess. Not too helpful when it comes to finding your room, though. You'll probably be the lucky one that has that hideous plant outside the door. I shall take up no more of your time. A bientôt. What a revelation!
I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Is there something I am not seeing? Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. Please, ask away, detective. Angeline has spoken of it. You made quite the impression on her, detective. I, I feel responsible for what came from that day. Florette's dismissal and Luke's. It is not your fault. Madame Vandenbosch does not like it when her rules or authority are undermined. I tried to explain to Angeline the same, but her guilt has not left her. As far as I'm aware, everything is in order. From what I understand, the late Viscount had made some questionable investments. But that is all in the past. And regarding the payment of the blackmail? Angeline does not have to worry about money anymore. I was born into some wealth, and I have earned my own fortune. I suppose you think I was unwise to pay it? I am glad Mademoiselle requested my help before you fell further out of pocket. Madame Van den Bosch had no intentions of paying it. Whether she believes there is a secret that could ruin the family or not. It was an honorable move for you to make the payment. It was certainly no small fee. Angeline is to be my wife, and then we shall be family. As far as I am concerned, 
My money is our money. Merci, monsieur. I shall leave you to prepare for tonight's celebrations. are beginning to become clearer. Things are beginning to become clearer. Another success. I never doubted myself. Ah. 
Elizabeth, thank you for coming. I shall not take up too much more of your precious time. Not at all, Detective. I had best not be away for too long. Madame would not be pleased when there is so much work to do. Well, Mademoiselle, if anyone was to ask, I required your urgent attention with a delicate matter. Uh, that should be enough to give you a moment's peace. <laughs> thank you, Detective. I have heard whispers, but this town is full of busybodies. It's hard to know what is the truth and what is hot air from socialites trying to outdo one another. I would not have thought you want to join in with such chatter. I'm not, but it can be hard to ignore. I try to quash any talk of it in the house. But it's easier said than done. When the staff are together, it seems to be a competition to see who can dream up the most scandalous rumour. You are a loyal maid and friend. Mademoiselle Angeline is fortunate to have you. It baffles me why they would target her in the first place. She has such a kind and pure soul. That may not be what you remember of Mademoiselle, but she has grown into a kind-hearted young lady. I was wary of that when I arrived, but I myself can see a change in her, a maturity. And if it is as kind and pure as you have stated, she should not be troubled by the letter. Letters, Detective. I brought you the other. I have tried to tell her not to think any more on them, but she fears that even a fabricated story could ruin the family name. She even frets at what it may do to her engagement. I have met Monsieur Demir, and I cannot see his love for Angeline diminishing at something so trivial. Merci for bringing this letter to me. Merci, mademoiselle. Pleasure is mine, detective. of the puzzle are finally coming together. Thank you. 
Of course, Detective. What is it? That is news to me, Detective. The deeds to the house that have been left on the table... Perhaps I am jumping to a hasty assumption. Oh no, Madame asked Archie to inquire in town about having the house registered as a landmark. It's a shame the snow is so thick. The gardens are quite wonderful in full bloom. Perhaps you will be able to walk them when the snow clears. She will no doubt be with Master Gedeon. The party was just beginning when I came upstairs. That is my cue to make a grand entrance. Am I presentable enough for the creme of society? Quite handsome, Detective. Merci. If you catch me snoring, please poke me in the ribs. I will use Madame's sharpest poker. It sounds as though someone else may have already been poked. Thank you.